Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equation. This is video 13 for chapter 6. The topic for the chapter is systems of two linear differential equations. In this video, we will go through one more example for improper nodes. Before that, let's do a quick review of the solution steps. So consider this equation x prime equal to ax, where we know a has repeated eigenvalue and one eigenvector. So the first step is to find the eigenvalue lambda, and this you find by um, setting up the characteristic polynomial of the A matrix and set it to be zero and find the roots. Okay, so here you find a double root and then you find the corresponding eigenvector by solving in this equation. And then here by the setting of our discussion, you will find only one eigenvector. And then you need to find another one called the generalized eigenvector, which um, satisfies this equation here not with zero, but with the v, the previous step solution, the eigenvector here on the right hand side. And then use all the information here in step one, two, and three, we can form the general solution, which takes this form. So here's one solution as usual times c1, and then the second solution that we call the z2 takes a bit complicated form. It um, is this z1 here times a t, but that's not enough. And then you have a e to the lambda t times eta, which is the generalized eigenvector. Okay, let's take another example. So we want to find the general solution only to this system, which is given here. Okay, let's follow the steps. The first step, we need to find eigenvalues. We set up this characteristic polynomial and then we compute the determinant and then we simplify it and factorize it and we get that lambda plus three square equals zero. Okay, and then we can find the roots for this, which is uh, repeated roots, lambda one equals lambda two, we call it just lambda here now, is negative three. Okay, the second step is to find the corresponding eigenvector. We call it V with A and B. And then we, um, we can solve this equation, set that to the left hand side, and that shall be zero. So plug in the value of the lambda here, and then the V is A and B. And then this becomes one, this becomes negative one, putting that in times a b and that shall equal to zero. Then we see we always need to write just one equation here. So use the first one. It has nicer numbers. We get a times one plus b times two equals zero. That's only one constraint. Okay, so um, you can choose any convenient number. So here I chose a to be two, b to be negative one. You can do other numbers. Okay, and then we have a v vector. The um, eigenvector is two, negative one. And then step three is to find the generalized eigenvector, which we call eta. And this is by solving this equation here. So here we already know the lambda and we also already know the v and eta is my unknown. Okay, putting in the, the v here, putting a minus lambda identity and putting eta one and eta two. And we see that um, um, we have two constraints which are actually the same equivalent. So we can just take one, say, let's take this one times that, so we have eta one plus two eta two equals two. Okay, and um, you can choose um, freely, um, let's say make a free choice, eta one is zero, and then we see eta two is one, because then you have zero plus two is two. Okay, and then we have an eta and zero one. Okay, here you can choose other numbers as well, which um, would give you um, different choices. Say you can choose eta two to be zero, 
then eta 1 is 2. That will work just as well. And then we form the general solution, which takes this form. And now we have all the um, um, all the terms we have found out. Lambda we know, V we know, eta we know. OK, so we can put in all the values for these terms. Lambda is negative 3. We have that. And then V is 2, negative 1. We put in there. And eta is 0, 1. We put in here. And we write write out the general solution okay and the last step we can um, talk about will be the stability well that is determined by the sign of the lambda which is negative and therefore the origin here which is an improper node and um, which is asymptotically stable okay so um, here I'll just show you another example for dealing with the case of improper node and finding general solutions following the recipe we have developed. Okay, so this is a short video and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.